The following video is brought to you by Yellow Jacket. Nearly 70 years of quality HVAC tools. Good morning, guys. We're gonna go pull up on a job here that I wanna get some film on. Uh, it is a ream, a rude, one of the two, same thing, heat pump. It's at a water, uh, it's at a, I don't know, a, a water system place, you know, where you pay your water bill, the people that supply you water here in the little hometown where I live. They called me out late, late Monday evening and said that their heat pump wasn't working in the heating mode, or actually the outdoor unit wasn't coming on at all. So they had to switch over to emergency heat. So when I got there, I found that the system was leaking refrigerant. And uh, that was one of the water guys right there waving at me. Um, I found that the system was leaking refrigerant on the reversing valve. One of those little uh, tubes that come off the coil uh, and goes into the, you know, I, I believe the true suction line. I'll show you, we're about to, we're pulling up right now. I'll show you uh, when we get there. I used uh, some of the great Big Blue from Refrigeration Technologies and found the leak no problem. The, re the reason I'm just now getting back over here today is because I came Monday, today's Thursday. Tuesday it rained all day and then yesterday, Wednesday, it rained all day again. So I'm just now getting uh, clear weather, but it's cold and uh, I'm, I just pulled up. I'm looking right at the heat pump. It's a rude. Uh, it's one of the rectangle ones with the big door on the back, so it's be very easy to access. And um, we are going to repair this refrigerant leak. We're just going to take the torch, and we're going to, you know, we're just going to heat it up, not too hot, because that tube is thin, and we're going to run some solder around it, because it, it's leaking right where it meets, you know, the suction line. So we're going to be very careful, try to use low heat, and just, you know, put a nice bead of solder around it, do a pressure test, all that. It's a slow, slow leak, but it is it, it, it has leaked down enough to where the low pressure switch has cut the system off. And the contactors all burn up. We're gonna replace that too. So if there's a little bit of refrigerant left in the system, I'll bubble it and show you guys the leak. All right, guys, you can see that the reversing valve is completely saturated in oil. And it's all coming. We have our trusty Big Blue here from Refrigeration Technologies. There you go. She is a leaker. That little leak has caused all this oil, but it's not leaking as hard as it was the other day, probably because it hardly do, probably don't hardly have no refrigerant left in it. But you can see that we do clearly have a leak right there. So we're gonna make that repair. All right guys, I got my area cleaned up as best I can with sandpaper so I can make a good braze. Uh, I would film the brazing, but my uh, camera died, so I'm having to use my cell phone. I have no way to prop up my, my iPhone, but I got it nice and cleaned up. I'm going to put a good bead of solder around that right here, and then uh, I'll show you guys what it looks like when I'm done. All right, guys, I got a nice bead of solder on it top and bottom I got my nitrogen here I'm just using my old analogs for the recovery and I'll go ahead and use them for the pressure test we're gonna go ahead and put some nitrogen on it and uh, in fact let's see if we can do that while we got the camera rolling okay the regulator is off my nitrogen tank is just about full I'd say about three quarters of the way full these are closed sorry about that we'll go to test we'll jack it up to about 50 pounds all 
I heard the pressure switch click. All right, we got about 50 in there. Let's take some big blue. Check all these other ones. This is the best way to do your bubbles, guys. Nice and slow where you don't actually have any bubbles. Okay, I don't see any leaks. So we're gonna take it up. It's about 150. Maybe I didn't have as much nitrogen as I thought. Let's see if I can get it up to about, okay. We got it up to about 125. It's maxed out, I don't want to go no more. All right, guys, I think that's a successful repair, but we'll let the nitrogen sit there for about 10 minutes, and if it doesn't move, we'll start the vacuum. All right, guys, I'm letting the vacuum pump warm up. The pressure test held. Now, you know, like I talked about in one video, I've been taking my cores out with this one hose setup, but I can't do it on this unit because I can't fit a core tool and the hose on these rings with the reversing valve right there in the way. Uh, it just makes it hard. So what I, I've left the core in and I have a depressor here and I still have the core tool so I can valve off and check my microns. It'll just take longer to pull that way, which is okay because I've got about a 30 minute trip I gotta go do while this thing's in a vacuum. I gotta go pick up my son from therapy, from uh, his occupational therapy and take him to daycare. So by the time I go get him, drop him off at daycare and get back, it'll be about 30, 45 minutes. And that should give this thing plenty of time to pull down in the vacuum, even with the core. Uh, the press so I'm gonna go ahead and open up the all right I opened up the core tool you can hear the, the sound in the vacuum pump and uh, I'm gonna go run and pick up my son and it's not a long line set either the air handler is literally sitting right behind this wall the line set goes up and then it comes right back down in a closet to the air handler so the air handler is sitting right behind this wall so we don't have a long line set you know we go up we probably got about you know 15 foot of line set so i'm going to make sure it starts registering microns before i leave and as long as that happens i'm going to go ahead and take off and go get my son we'll come back make sure the vacuum is down uh to 500 or lower and then we'll charge this thing up all right i'm charging the system up with uh, rs44b which is uh r453a I've really grown to like this refrigerant. I was able to get half the charge in there. I need to put about eight pounds in it, but it's cold, so I'm gonna have to start the machine up. But before I can do that, I've got to replace that old burn-up contactor. So I'm gonna do that, then we'll start the machine.
All right, guys, the machine was running up until a second ago. I didn't run the temperature up high enough. It warmed it up very quick. I put six and a half pounds of the RS44B. I believe that's all it needs. The machine calls for right around eight pounds. But with the short line set, don't think we're going to need that extra pound and a half. Uh, because it's heating very well. And uh, I'll check it again this summer. They always have me come check it. And if I'll check the charge again. But uh, I'll get some shots when the, when the unit's back up and running. We got our new contactor in, as you saw. This one here is burnt to a crisp. You see the discoloration. All right, uh, it's in time delay. So let's give it a minute. All right, guys, I missed the machine running again, but you gotta take my word for it, it runs. This Schrader, on the true suction keeps leaking i keep having to stick my knife blade in there and push it out and you can see somebody's put some looks like they've put some leak lock on it i now want to demonstrate how good the appion core removal tool is on replacing a schrader under pressure a lot of guys have said that appion core tools suck when it comes to changing a core tool under pressure well that's just completely untrue Appion has the best core tool for changing cores under pressure. And I'm going to demonstrate that right now. Okay, let me get hooked on it. Okay, I'm on it. I just broke it loose. Now keep in mind, guys, I'm doing this with one hand because I have the camera, or my phone, if you will, in my hand. And I'm Applying pressure and turning. That core should be loose. Okay. There it is. There's the old core. Now, I want to throw it off to the side right there. And I'm in Crocs because I broke my small, my pinky toe, if you will. And I can't wear my boots because it pinches on my toe. So that's why I'm in my Crocs. I have a thing full of Schraders here. I'm going to get a new Schrader. Alright guys, trying to do this with one hand, so apologize about the camera work. Okay. There's the new Schrader. That's it, it's in there. There you go. There you go. Now, for anybody that says that Appion is not a good core tool for changing cores under pressure, does not know what the hell they are talking about. I just did that with one hand because I had the tool in one hand and, and the camera right here in the other hand. Best core tool on the market. All right, guys, she's all buttoned back up. She's alive and well. 
I have my sticker here. Comstar is who makes the RS44B, which is R453A. But they make a couple different other ones too. So I've checked RS44B, R453A, six pounds, eight ounces, mineral oil in the date. She's good to go. Thank y'all for watching. We'll see y'all on the next one.